Wow. What an awesome, awesome manifestation of his presence. We thank God for the first service. It was truly the hour of power. And this second service, as we can see, it's now from glory to glory. I pray for you that you will not miss out of God's blessing this morning in the name of Jesus. I welcome our online members. I pray for you that it will not be an internet connection. It will be a divine connection in the mighty name of Jesus. The same power that is so mighty with us here this morning, I believe is the same experience wherever you may be. So stay connected divinely, because I believe it's your turn to testify. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? Our theme for the month of May has been divine restoration, and the month is now fast coming to, to a close. Uh, this morning I'll be taking part three for the second service, uh, divine restoration. Our text will be Second Kings 13, we read two verses there, verse 20 and verse 21. Second Kings 13, verses 20 and 21. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. It came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down, and touched the bones of Elisha. He revived and stood up on his feet. The Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in the mighty name of Jesus. The challenges of life is common to all. It's not age sensitive, not gender bias, no racial discrimination at all. Every man born of a woman is bound to face one challenge or the other from time to time. That's just the way it is. The nature of the challenge may vary, but the presence of challenge is a constant. Job puts it accurately in Job 14 verse 1. Job 14 verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and the full days full of trouble. The good news, however, is that no matter how deep the challenge is, it's not the end of the matter. No matter how dark the night is, it will not end that daybreak. And no matter how bad winter is, it will not stop summer from coming. That's why I am so confident in God that whatever challenge may be going through now, there will be a turnaround for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Because what you consider case closed may be a fresh start. And what you, what you call the end may in fact be the beginning. In the text that we read, this man died. I'm sure people had cried, at least his family members. And they've concluded the matter. So let's go and bury this man. It's case closed. But then as they were going to bury him, a war broke out. And... <laughs> As soon as they saw a war, the family who was crying out, showing love, that, oh, our, be, our beloved brother is gone, they couldn't care less. They dumped him and abandoned him. If lion could eat him up, that's okay. But we are not going to be consumed by the war. Unknown to them, they dumped him at the sepulchre, the grave site of Elisha who had died, and now the bone in the open. But because anointing doesn't die, the bone still carry the anointing, which is the presence of God. As soon as they dumb this man and he made contact with the presence of God, bam, divine restoration. He revived. And I'm sure he began to run. And so the people who dumped him now had to run faster because they are no longer dealing with the war. Now they are dealing with what they thought must be a ghost of this man. The matter described as case closed may be a fresh start. The matter you call the end might be just the beginning. Michael Jordan said, and I quote, never say never. 
Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. End of quote. It is so true. Somebody else said, never say never about anything. Because if you do, life has a way of humbling you. Those who dumped this man, as far as they were concerned, it was over. But unknown to them, a surprise was waiting. See, the dead may live, and the living may die in a matter of hours. Never say never. When I was a young boy, like 10 years old, one of my uncles had a terrible accident, auto crash, auto accident with one of his friends. And so when you, when you saw the, the, the friend, because there was blood from head to toe, terrible injuries we could see, blood everywhere. Everybody concluded that this one can't make it. Before tomorrow morning, he will die. But we rejoiced because my uncle had no single scratch as far as eyes could see on his body. So the doctors believed that in a couple of days, I was just in shock, that in a couple of days, he will recover. But surprisingly, my uncle died the following morning because unknown to the doctors, he had internal bleeding, which they did not see. So the one we thought we live died, and then the friend that we thought we die recovered. Don't make conclusions about any matter. Never say never. If the time of anyone is not up, it doesn't matter how close to death he is, he will live. One of my very close friends, I knew him now for over 40 years, we were teenagers together, we are still very close. Some few years back, arm robbers went to his house and they shot him. And the bullet was entered the, the head, the skull. And as it can happen in, in Africa, Nigeria in particular, the doctors were on strike. So they took him from one hospital to another hospital. They said, doctors are on strike. And then finally, they decided to take him to a private hospital where the doctor will attend to him. But then there was also fuel scarcity. So the, the vehicle he was in, the, uh, the gas finished. And then <laughs> they put him on a motorbike. And as he was going, the motorbike also, the gas finished. Anyway, before they could attend to him, it was four days. But he's still living. When your time is not up, you can die. That's why I don't understand when people these days are, maybe you are just coughing or um, you are sneezing. I mean, you are, they are already inviting death. Ah, maybe this is the end of it. Fear welcomes evil. It's a gateway for every evil. If the time of anyone is up, no prayers or anointing can keep him alive. Because Elisha, whose bone was he carry anointing? You can imagine how much of anointing the flesh must have been carrying. But with the anointing still in the bone and in the flesh, Elisha died. Elisha died because his time was up. Nobody can kill you before your time. People are the ones killing themselves. Listen, your employer will find it impossible to lay you off until the law permits it. I mean, I, I worked for, you know, some good years in the corporate, and I was, I was HR manager at some point in my career. I probably have told you the story before. This fellow was already laid off. The letter was ready. The pay-off check was also ready. It was a long list of about 400 people to be fired, which was a, good, a big number. But then the day we should be giving him the letter and his pay-off, another operations manager resumed. And the operations manager, you know, you know, is the head of his business, so he could decide who goes and who stays. So he, he called us and said, hey, I found a particular name on this list. You see the same Tony? I said, yes. So no, you can't fire this one. I said, sir, the corporate head office says we must cut 400. So I have no problem with the number. Cut 400, but not this one. 
take him out and look for somebody else. So, of course, it, it was the boss. So we took Tony out, whose letter was ready, paycheck, payoff was ready, and we went to look for somebody else who was not included before. That one was fired, and Tony stayed on. Why? Because it wasn't his time to be fired. Don't stress yourself too much. Because no matter how bad the situation is, it will change. Winter will not stop summer, and night will not end at daybreak. There are too many anxieties and worries going on around, and that is more deadly than whatever it is that is bringing the worry and the fear. Listen, permanent failure exists only for those who quit. Now, even if you are fired, it can only be for a child of God that it has to be for something better. It depends on how you see it. Because permanent failure exists only for those who quit. Quit believing God. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. Listen, the bad news is nothing is permanent. The good news is nothing is permanent. Make your choice and you will be correct. Whatever is going on with you, is not permanent. That could be a bad news. It could be a good news. But your choice is the correct choice. So make up your mind how you describe what is going on with you. The F grade can become an A grade. Remember some group of students, they've done so poorly in the exams. One of them testifying was a, a, a great Christian, and he's called Super F. And, and I'm not saying go to school and score F. That's not good. However, because God is a God of restoration, He's a God, He's a, he's a very good God who sees the heart of His children. Some get F not because they didn't prepare, but it just happened. Anyway, long story short, again, this happened in Nigeria because many things can happen in Africa. <laughs> the lecturer who had the scripts was waylaid by area boys, as they call them, some touts on the road. And then he lost all the marking, all the scripts of the, of the students. So he came back and said, well, I couldn't even mark <laughs> the scripts. The children who were so sure that this was F paper, you know how you finish an exam, you know this is, this is F, there's, there's just no, no way around it. Now we're given a chance to rewrite the exam. Aha. Now those who were to get F before, some of them returned with A. Because whatever went wrong with them before, they fixed it. The point I'm making is, the, your current situation is in the permanent. The permanence of it is your response to it. Many COVID-19 positive are reversed to COVID-19 negative. At least I know, I know a few. But at least those that I, that, I, that I know were calm throughout. Very calm. They were not disturbed. In fact, one of them was just at home. Didn't even know serious, no, 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 no symptoms, nothing. There are more than one million people in my, in my estimate, not statistic, who are moving around everywhere around the world, who are positive, only they've not been tested. And many of them will not die. It's not even a prayer. But the, the truth of the matter is that death is quicker when it's welcome. And I'm not saying live a reckless life. I'm only saying don't die before your time. Don't die before your time. Hit the warnings. There are people with underlying conditions. They've told you, you already know yourself that something is going on then don't compound the issue. But to sit down every day and be waiting for the day to die, that day may come quicker. Is what I'm saying. Cancer can disappear overnight. It has done so many times. If you call a diagnosis death, then death moves in. And if you call it a test for testimony, then you may, be surpri you may surprise the world very soon. 
My greatest concern for the world that we are in right now, as I see it, is the fact that every, virtually everywhere there is fear. The more we talk about it, the more some people say, well, can't you see what's going on? Well, are you not pretending about this problem? How can I? I know there's pandemic. I'm only saying I don't, at least in my home, in this church, by the grace of God, I don't see death. I mean, allow me to make that conclusion. And tell your neighbor, let me make my conclusion. I don't see death. Oh, they are laying people off. Isn't that homelessness? No, I don't see homelessness. There will be temporary setback. But things will turn around. Some of us have been, have been broke before, but you have not been homeless. Some of us have lost our job before, one time, two times, three times. Oh, you are still alive. Is the God who saw you through that time, is he, is he not alive anymore? As a church, as part of this church, don't entertain any fear. Because fear is torment. It opens the door for evil. Please. And if you are hearing me anywhere all over the world, don't let you know, fear grip you down. Because it is not over until it's over. No one should sit down in despair and sorrow, staring at the problems, but standing at the problems, but rather everyone must stand up with great courage and vigor, taking advantage of the world of opportunities that the pandemic is bringing. Because in fear, you can't even think. Men cannot be trusted, however, with changes. Because man is limited. We put our hope in the employer. We put our hope in the government. We put our home even in the church. You can't put your hope on any man. If God is absent in any gathering, it's no longer a church. Because it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, that's where I am. So the fact that people gather in a place and they say it's a church doesn't mean it's a church. And there are many gatherings all over the world that is not a church. Listen, let's stop this idea of thinking that our life depends 100% on our employer. We, we've made these employers like, like God over our lives sometimes. Your employer says you are an asset. It's not a compliment. They are only saying when you are no longer needed, you are disposed of. Because an asset, after a while, you sell it. I mean, so, so when they say, oh, our employees, they are our assets. Employees, they are happy. That is not a compliment. Asset lose value soon. They get obsolete soon. And after a while, they, 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 they sell it off. I know that. I was, I, I still, I'm still an HR practitioner, if you want to say that. I, I cancel CEOs. I talk to them on people management. I know that... The employers don't love you that much. I mean, I'll explain how they have made money for many years. But one downturn, the very first asset to cut is people. How can you be fooled? To the point that you now place all your hope in that company. You cannot rely on the government. Every move of government has a political undertone. That's the nature of government. It's not about good or bad governance. That's just the nature of government. Family should have been the last hope, but when it's life and death, it's me first and then others. I told them in the first service, the, the, the woman, that the, the husband died, and said, look, I must be buried with him. No, no, just leave me. Stop holding me. I, I, I'm, just bury me with him. So I think after a while, when they were very close to the grave, they said, let's, let's leave her. I mean, and then the woman peeped a little bit and saw the thing, and she just stepped back. Because only Jesus can die for you. Isaiah 49, 15. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget a suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? The Bible answered, yes, they may forget Yet will I not forget thee. 
let's stop putting our hope in government, in employers. If you have lost your job, your employer, they have just shown you their true color. The one they show you all this why is, uh, is because things are good. Don't be afraid of being abandoned by man. That's not a problem. Where you are abandoned could be the problem. This man was abandoned quite all right, but he was abandoned by the anointing. What a good place to be. That's why I really pity people who are not in the presence of God this time. And I'm not talking about church in the, in the sanctuary. I'm talking about just hearing the word of God. If the challenge of life drops you near Jesus, you can be sure of restoration. If we start putting our hope in man, we'll be permanently healed of the disease called disappointment. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The only one you can trust is the almighty God. If everyone has no answer to your problem, it's a good place to be. Because you are then permanently healed of running Elta Skelter. <laughs> Abandoned with God. Everybody said, no, there's no point running anywhere again. Sometimes it's good for man not to have answers to our problems. Because then we are condemned to only one source. And that's God. When you are abandoned and left with your problems, make contact with the supernatural. When the natural contacts the supernatural, there is a restoration. And there are several ways we can make contact with the supernatural. Three will be relevant this morning. One, contacts are made by prayers. In Mark 10, 46 to 52, blind Bartimaeus. Mark 10, 46 to 52, he began to cry, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says, God, Jesus to steal. What we need to do at this time is to call more on him in prayers. God still answers prayers. We can make contact by faith. The man in Luke 17, verse 19, Luke 17, verse 9, 19. Ten of them had been healed of their leprosy. Only him returned back. And Jesus said, well, they are not ten cleansed. And in verse 19, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, and he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. God is looking for men of faith at this time, not men of fear. Our brain is thinking too much about fear than faith. And where there is fear, there can be no faith. In Mark 5.34, Mark 5.34, the woman with the issue of blood, she got to a point where everyone couldn't help him. Nobody could help her. her Nobody else could help her. At that point, in fact, she had spent all her money to doctors of different specialties. They couldn't help her. Then she said, okay, let me try Jesus. She left home in faith. If only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. And she touched and Jesus said in verse 34, and he said unto her daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Nobody pray for her. Her faith made her whole. There's place for prayer. But prayer that is not connected with faith in God can be empty. The third way to make contact is reaching out to the anointing. Like we saw in the story we read. The bone of Elisha was still carry the anointing of God. This man made contact with the anointing and he revived. Listen to me. No one contacts the Lord and stay contaminated. When you contact the Lord, you are in contact with rest and restoration. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, Matthew eleven twenty, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Life can be restored when we stay in contact with the resurrection and the life. It's very crucial. It's very important that you understand this. A lady, a music minister, lost her only son early in the morning as she was getting ready for church. It was a massive program. She was the one advertised already, you know, for the program to lead a massive worship program. And then the son began to convulse in the morning. And then this boy passed. And the devil said, I will see how 
We will worship God today. She was the only one at home. She packed the boy and left the boy there. And went to church. He didn't tell the pastor. He didn't tell anybody. Grabbed the microphone. Worship God like never before. There are some, very, there are some people crazy for Jesus. And that's why you have to evaluate your own Christianity and see where you are. This lady worshiped God like, like never before. The program was over. It was, it was so anointed. A program. And then after the service, she figured out that if I should tell the pastor, then, you know, the, the joy of this program will, will go down. So tomorrow I will take care of things and then tomorrow we'll, we'll find out. And as she was approaching her house, the neighbors had gathered. I said, what kind of a Christian are you? How can you lock your son in the room, in the house? I said, what, how do you mean? Said, the boy died in the morning. He said, no, she was crying, banging the door. And then we realized there was a noise coming from there because while she was worshiping the Lord, the angel went to her house. And woke the boy up. If you want to clap, go ahead and clap for the Lord. There are people with reckless, rugged, radical kind of faith. There are still a few on earth. Are you like that? Will you not deny Christ? Many of the challenges we have are what Apostle Paul called light afflictions. And many had left the faith because of it. The duet, however, of time and chance plays a crucial factor in the journey of life as I put this together and close. The duet of life, time and chance plays a crucial factor in the journey of life. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happened to them all. To be in the right place at the right time is orchestrated by divine intervention. Time and chance is a subject of mercy. The error of one is a blessing to another. It's about time and chance. Probably told you before, a lady desperately looking for another job. I must have been praying. There are two candidates. One was better than this lady. But the better candidate went to have lunch. And then returning from lunch, didn't check her denture very well. And the first question she was asked, because she was the better of the two, she was the first to be interviewed. And she laughed as, as if to say, ah, what an easy question. And then one Frenchman on the panel saw the teeth green with leaves because the lady must have eaten a... Uh, some good vegetable for, for, for lunch. And then the recruiter just stopped the interview and we're wondering what happened. He said, thank you very much. We'll get back to you. He eh? said, no, we can't hire her. Can't, didn't you see the, the greens? That if we ask her to go and negotiate contract for us in Shell, we will lose the contract. So we have only one more candidate. So that one came in. He said, well, since we, are, we have to take one of the two. I, I don't want that one. We don't even need to interview this one. Let's take her time and chance. So it's crucial that we pray this morning. The flight that dropped some killed others one hour after. It's a time and chance. A subject of mercy. There was a flight, you know, and from several of the flights, but there was a particular one. There was an, a flight called, a, an airline called ADC many years ago. I think it was in 1996. The flight landed in Paracol from Lagos. Dropped some people. And picked some other people. On the way back to Lagos, 45 minutes flight, crashed. Why did he not crash when coming? Time and chance. That plane dropped people safely. But carried new people and they, they, they all died. The man abandoned to faith in our test, rose up in faith. He was a subject of mercy. This morning, we want to cry to God. Want to cry to God for divine restoration. As far as people were concerned, it was over for this man. He died. The burial procession was going on. But God orchestrated a war. They dumped him, not elsewhere, but by the anointing. And the man whose case was closed was just a beginning. Don't close your own case by yourself. Don't agree with anyone who says it's over for you. Because now is a new beginning. Can we rise, please? Ancient wall, 
ever true. Change me and change you. We have come with open hearts. All and the world is deeper. The Bible says that the word came unto some, but it didn't mix with faith, so there was no benefit. I'm praying for you, even before we begin to pray, that the word that has come this morning, we meet with faith and not doubt in you. Because it is when the word meets with faith that there is tangible testimony. If you are here, you are not born again, you need that first connection. That's the first connection you need. You are watching over the internet or you are even going to listen to this message afterwards. You are not born again, I encourage you. Even if there's nobody there, kneel down or stand up. Just stay connected with God and say, please save my soul. Connect me with yourself, Lord. I, I forsake my sins. Confess of them. I know I'm a sinner. Please save my soul. It's as simple as that. The Lord will welcome you to his kingdom. And you will not be the same again. Well, if you are here, we, are, we can see you. You can just raise your hand up. The ushers will come to you and give you a decision card. But if you are all saved again this morning, that's a good place to be. Father, if there be anyone out there that have raised up their hand or kneeling down in a position of surrender unto you, please save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. Take their names off the book of death. In Jesus' name we pray. For us this morning, we have five prayer points I want you to pray. As I told you, connection can come through prayers. It can come through faith. It can come by the anointing. And the anointing is all over here. I can feel the power of God in our midst. Make contact this morning for your own divine restoration. First prayer. Say, oh Lord my God. Say loud and clear. Say, oh Lord my God. Let the end of a chapter open up a more glorious beginning for me in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray to God. Oh, let the hand of a chapter opens up a more glorious beginning for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, my God, let the hand of a chapter opens up a more glorious beginning for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Your second prayer say, oh, Lord, my God, surprise all that think that there is no hope for me in God. Surprise them. Surprise them. Come on, pray. Talk to God. God still answers prayers. Father, please surprise all that think there is no hope for me in God. Surprise them, Lord. Oh, surprise them. Surprise them, oh Lord. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number three, say, Father, orchestrate my supernatural restoration by your divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, pray. There is divine orchestration, working of things together for good. Say, Father, orchestrate my natural rest, supernatural restoration by your divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number four, say, oh God of mercy, let your mercies position me for divine restoration by your mercy. Divine orchestration is mercy. Father, let your mercies position me for divine restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, you are going to say, Father, please let me laugh last. Talk to God. Let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. It's a common saying that either laugh last, laugh best. Father, please let me laugh last. Let me laugh last. Now thank him if you, if you know that you receive your own blessing this morning. Wave your hands unto him. Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus mighty name we have prayed my father and my God I thank you for your word and I thank you because you are the prayer answering God we have called on to you again this morning please orchestrate our supernatural restoration by your divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus 
Father, turn things around for good. In the name of Jesus. Let people around us see a major surprise of your turning the end to a beginning. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, reach out to all your children all over the world who are sick now, particularly of COVID-19 or some other underlying factor. I know that until you say it's over, it's not over. Please touch them all wherever they are now and give them life in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration of life in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, the families of those that have lost people, please, you are the comforter. Comfort them yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. The wisdom that we need to navigate this season, please grant unto us Graciously, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we believe in you. Our hope is in you and in you alone. Not in the employer, not in the government, not in anyone but in you. You are the owner of your church. Any time and every time we gather, let your presence be mighty in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we have asked for divine restoration. Lord, we receive divine restoration. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen.